Hi guys, welcome to my channel Vinyl Beauty or welcome back. I'm Debbie if you don't know me. For today's video we're going to be doing three looks with the Beauty Bay Dark Fantasy Palette, this gorgeous palette here. I've already done a first impressions and one look with the palette so I'll link that if you want to check it out but I've been very inspired by the colour story of this one and just wanted to create a few more looks, give you a bit of inspiration if you've bought the palette as I know some of you have. And there's not too many videos up on YouTube with inspiration, so I thought it might be useful for you guys. If you're not aware of the colour story, this is the colour story. It's beautiful. It's got very dark, deep, grungy vibes. It's the sort of makeup aesthetic that I'm all about. So, as I say, it made me very excited when I saw this one. So, let's just jump into it. I'm going to show you three looks and then we'll get back together at the end and I'll give you a review of the palette and let you know my final thoughts. I I think I'll probably have used the majority of the shades, if not all of them, by the end of the three looks. So why don't we just jump straight into look number one. Okay, so on to the first look then with the Beauty Bay Dark Fantasy palette. Already primed my eyes with the Sigma Eyeshadow Base in Persuade. And we're going to go with the purples today. Use the purples on my lower lash line in my first impressions, but I want to make them the star of the show. So we're going to use these. We're going to intensify with black. Maybe use this shade for a bit of sparkle and maybe a white inner corner highlight. So that's kind of what I'm feeling. But before we do that, I want to get some black in my waterline and on my lower lash line and smudge that out to kind of give us a, a base there. Now I've put that in my waterline and onto my lower lash line a bit and I'm just smudging out with a Linda Helberg 303. Just want to super intense up the black lower lash line but then blend it out with purple so pencils work great as a base for that particularly these LH Cosmetics Linda Halberg ones next I'm going to go in with the purple the shade grunge here I've got a Sigma E38 and I'm going to pack that through my crease and quite high as well because I'm going to use the black lower than that so really want this to show above it probably will help to keep my eyes open doing this so that I can see where I want to go but I've got quite a lot of space between like my lids and my brows so for me this works well to take it up quite high a bit at a time so that we don't get too much fallout but so far so good this purple's a good purple I like the tone of it it's a grungy purple it's not like a vibrant purple now I've got the intensity there that I want with this just fluffing around the edges a little bit and I might use a bit of the white to blend out further at the end but for a purple because purples are notoriously difficult to formulate and are never that great in my opinion this is not too bad at all and I as I say, I really love the tone of it. I'm using a Morphe E36. I'm just going to take that onto the lower lash line as well. I'm using this brush because it's kind of fluffy, but not like too big of a brush. But I do want this to be a blended out look. But I want to use this to pack, first of all, over that black base. And sort of blend at the same time, if that makes sense. And I'm making sure to link that in the outer corner, but we're still keeping that rounded shape today. Not going to do a winged out look today. I'm not going to wear a wing, I don't think. Okay, keeping with the same brush that we started with. That's not got much product on now. Just using that just to further blend that out underneath. So we're really taking that down quite low and kind of bringing it out where my my blush is, you know, bringing it out towards my cheeks. And this is blending on itself really well. But there's not very many blending shades in the palette, but I don't mind that as long as the shade will blend itself out. And yeah, that's working really, really well, I think. Really grungy, really pretty. Now I want to use the black, which is dark matter, the black matte here, to really intensify in the crease. It's got a fair bit of kick up in the pan, so I'm really tapping that off. 
and taking that deep into the crease and all the way from inner to outer. I'm using a Sigma E45 because it's tapered, it just makes it a lot easier to really get into that crease. I love that black, I'm not getting any fallout from it. As long as you tap your brush off it's fine and it's super super black and it's layering really nicely over that purple as well. So now I'm going to cover the entirety of my lids with NYX Glitter Primer but I'm not looking to do anything like cut crease looking, just want to give these shimmers a chance to not go all over my face because that's what happens with Beauty Bay shimmers for me if I'm not careful so but I use NYX Glitter Primer with a pretty much every shimmer anyway put way too much on this eye so we're going to go in with the shade Nightmare next and that's going all over the lid and that is a really pretty shimmer. This is more my kind of shimmer, like I said in my first impressions, like the putty shimmers are not my favourite, and the ones with too much glitter and sparkle, I know everyone loves those, but I hate getting the glitter and sparkle in my eyes, whereas this is like a smooth, just, yeah, ordinary shimmer really. But it's more my kind of thing. Just going to swap to a bit bigger of a brush so that we can get this shimmer applied a bit quicker. So that's the purple shimmer applied. Just want to re-intensify that black in the crease and where we've kind of gone up a little bit too high with the shimmer, that will hide that as well. Now to add a hint of sparkle, we're going to go in with the shade Hack and I'm just going to apply it with my fingers because that's the only way I can get these to work but I only want to just pounce a little bit of sparkle over the top anyway, just to bring that purple shimmer to life a little bit, just to give it that like wet look appearance. So I'm just pressing that on just everywhere we've put that shimmer really. I think that has made all the difference to really make that shimmer pop. And that shade is quite smooth actually, the glitter particles in it aren't too big, which is good news for me. And then for the inner corner I'm going to go in with the shade Atmosphere which is the white in the palette. i use that as a matte highlight. It's not the most pigmented white ever I have to say. If you want to know what my favourite white is for this kind of thing it's Taco by Sugar Pit which is the best white ever. This is kind of turning lilac going to keep applying a bit more though. I think once we've built up some intensity it'll look white, we'll be okay. I'm going to use that same atmosphere shade to highlight my brow. It's working better up there as a shadow, it's not great to pack on to really be intense. could have put a white base there, sometimes I'll do that and that does help with that. Okay, so that's the look so far. Just going to put the finishing touches to it and I'll be back with the finished look. Okay, guys, this is the finished look and I love how this one's turned out. It's super spooky and dramatic. It was an easy one to create. It's really just a smoky eye, but I love how it looks. So to finish it off, I've gone in with a Lethal Cosmetics Chimera lipstick. This is in the shade Abyss, which is a matte black. One of my favourite black lipsticks in my collection. I do have quite a few. And yeah, really love how it turned out. I like the black in this palette, I thought that led really well over that grunge purple. The purple really impressed me, it's a nice tone and it blends really really easily without blending away too much. The shade Nightmare, which I've used on my lids, it's one of those like smooth kind of shimmers, the type I really like. But to spice it up a little bit, went in with Hack over the top just for a bit of sparkle and wetness on the lids, I think that worked really really well. So yeah, really enjoy creating look number one. I hope you like it. Let's hop into look number two. Okay, so on to the next look. I've already primed using the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. We're going to be going in with this shade Reality. I'm also going to be using Distortion. I want to really make this a kind of wine, kind of warm sort of look. So yeah, that's the plan for today. Probably incorporate another couple of mattes and shimmers as well. So let's get started. I'm going to go in first with the shade Algorithm. So this caramel brown here because I want to lay down a little bit of a neutral 
base in the inner part of my eye here and sort of coming up to quite high in my eye space there but not all the way up to my brows so I always take my crease work higher than my natural crease I'd like to say I've got hooded eyes but I've just got old eyes and if I do this then at least I can maximize the space I've got quite a lot of eye space above like my lid so it definitely helps gives the illusion of more lid space and it would definitely work for any of you with hooded eyes but you really have to work with your own eye shape and figure out like what works best for you and that's laying down super easily always with a neutral shade they blend really easily and they're easy to work with I think but I'm having no problems with that at all but just take that over just a little bit more because I am going to join that up with the reality shade the wine coloured mat which I'm super excited to use so then I'm going to take reality, I'm going to pack that in my outer corner and all the way across the crease. I'm going to go in a bit at a time and tap off my brush. These mats are buildable and I think that's the easiest way if you prefer to do your face makeup before your eye makeup like I do. It's a beautiful tone though. I'm all about these sort of colours. Anything that's got a reddishness to it always suits my colouring I think and my complexion so I really like how well that's packing on I'm not blending it yet I'm just just packing and bringing it level-ish with the shade we've already laid down and then we're going to meet them in the middle once I've kind of got it where I want it so now I can start bringing it through the crease a bit going with a rounded shape again but I think I am going to put a wing through it so I want to bring it quite far out, quite high up so that the wing can kind of cut through it if that makes sense. Now I'm going to go in with a blending brush and just blend around the edges a bit. I'm really impressed with these Beauty Bay mats as to how easily they blend on themselves and you don't really need a, a lighter colour to blend them out so really want to maintain this pink in the look or the wine tone so I don't want to blend it out with anything else and I'm happy to see it's blending itself quite well I'm using a natural hairbrush because I think that also helps because they're a bit more scratchy I'm just gonna go back in and re-intensify this outer corner now I'm gonna go in with Nablus Cupid Arrow Stylo number three put that in my waterline and lower lash line this makes a really good base and helps the shadows stay all day. I really love this product. And then I'm going to set that with the same shade we've been using, so the reality shade. If you don't have that pencil, any dark pencil would probably do the job or just pack on the shadow really close to your lash line. But I always find the colour kind of leaves my lower lash line quicker so I want to intensify to make sure that it stays strong there. And then a brush with no additional product, just going to blend under that just to make it a bit more seamless. I'm blending all around the edges as well. Just where these two colours meet, the algorithm shade and reality shade, I'm just going to see if I can get a bit of a better blend there. I'm just dipping into both of the colours, just a slight dip into each, just to kind of make a mix of both of those colours. Okay, happy with that now, so I'm going to go in with NYX Glitter Primer and take that over the section that we've not got shadow on and slightly over the corner as well, into the socket of my eye just above the eyeball. That works best for me if I want to really maximise the space on my lids. Now for the majority of my lid I'm going to go in with Distortion but also I want to use the shade Grime kind of at the cut at the front there if it makes sense as I do it. So I'm sort of angling that down as I go. That one's picked up really nicely on a sticky brush. It's got such a dark base to that. It's not super sparkly. I do really like it. I like the tone of it, I like how well it's picking up on the brush. This one's a, a good shadow in my book. 
and then for the bit of my lid that we've left here I'm gonna go in with the shade grime here that is a really pretty pewter silver I'm gonna trace out the kind of cut of my eye there but then it will be at the bottom here so we're sort of laying it on a slant something along those lines I think it's looking pretty I'm going to wrap that around my lower lash line as well I think that could work really nicely I don't normally do this but I'm going to pack a little bit of glitter glue here just to give that shadow a chance to adhere and just wrap that around the lower lash line it's subtle but it's sparkling in the light I don't know if it's picking it up on camera, but it is, it's pretty. It's not kind of the most popping in a kind of highlight ever, but I like the effect it's giving. Okay, that's the look to this point. Just gonna hop off camera to do my wing. I have got a tutorial of how I do my wings. I'll link that down in the description box or up in the cards if you're interested how I do it. I'm just gonna add mascara and a lip and I'll be back with you to show you the finished look. Okay guys, so this is the finished look for this one. Really happy with it. I think this is kind of my neutral kind of makeup for me. It's what I feel comfortable in. I really like these wineish kind of warm tones on myself. Really pretty, I think, on my complexion. And I love the shimmers that I used in this one. I didn't think I'd say that. So the shimmers aren't all equal in this palette. Some of them I've got almost too much sparkle for me and too much glitter fall down. These were ultra smooth. They weren't too difficult to pick up on a brush either. And yeah, I think they look really, really pretty, really happy with it. To finish it off, I've gone in with a uh, Ilamasca gel liner to make a wing. I've got the Supernatural Mascara from Melt on my lashes. And then for lips, I've gone in with a NARS uh, luster lip paint I'm not sure they do these anymore they do do lip paints but I'm not sure if they do this shade anyway this is in the shade combat it's one of my favorites in my collection it's a little bit metallic but not too much and the lip paint formula just lasts forever they're really really good they've got a staying power of about four or five hours which is really important when you're using such a deep color as this I think for it to last and to wear well which these really do and I think it was just the perfect complement to the look to make it a monochromatic wine look, which is what I was after. So yeah, really, really like this one. I think I prefer this one to the previous one, but I do like them both. You'll have to let me know what you think, but I hope you liked it and you enjoyed the tutorial. Let's move on to the next look. Okay, so for the third look, I wanna use the blue because I've not used it yet. So that's the shade Hardcore here. Not really a blue eyeshadow lover, but I do like a deep, dark, kind of inky blue, so I think it's going to be fine. We're going to mix it with the shade Hoax here, the brown, thought that could be fun. And I also want to use this duochrome here, which is a blue to purple shift, so that could be interesting as well. And then I want to top off the look with this silver or put that in the inner corner. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to make this work, but I just want to do a bit of a cool colour combination. So... Yes, yeah, so that's what we're going to do for look number three. So I've already primed my eyes using the MAC Paint Pot in Soft Ochre and we're going to go straight into the shade Hoax here and put that through the crease. I'm going to take that from inner to outer and it doesn't matter if this goes on my lids because I'm going to cover that with shimmers anyway. I like this shade, it's uh, quite a cool tone brown which if I'm wearing neutrals, cool tones are my favourite. I'm going to take that from inner to outer as I say but probably just stopping kind of three quarters of the way across because I want this to sort of be a bit of a winged out look and I want the blue to be the, the focus of like where it wings out. So the other brown shade in the palette algorithm is a lot more warm tone than this. I think there's definitely a place for, for both of these. I know if you're into colourful makeup you'd probably prefer not to see any neutrals but I quite like the addition of the neutrals I think it gives us a bit more scope for for looks and you could just do a neutral look if you so desired and as I say I do like cool tone neutrals more than warm tone neutrals I think although I wear all sorts of makeup from neutral to really colourful graphic to 
you know, classic sort of blown out looks, all sorts of things. So it doesn't worry me really. That's laying down nicely and I can see me using that shade again, as I say, just for a very simple look for work because it would work very well for that. So in this outer corner now, I want to go in with the blue. So we're going in with hardcore, the navy blue in the palette. And I want to create a bit of a little winged out shape, but nothing crazy. So I'm just flicking that out a little bit whilst I pack that on. Probably only about that far. I don't want anything too, too mad today. Those of you that have been here before know I do some big winged out looks sometimes, but I think that's enough today. And I'm going to take that onto my lower lash line as well about two thirds of the way across trying to keep this quite saturated here and then we'll just blend the edges once I've placed the colour down so just placing it at this stage Okay, now we've placed that colour down, I just want to blend a little bit between the brown and the blue. I just want to create quite a murky colour, but this palette has got those sort of murky vibes, so I don't mind that at all. And I just want to soften and diffuse the edges here, but as I said, I don't want things to get too out of control in this outer corner, so being careful just to fluff just around the edges rather than drag the shadow out too far. That's blending quite nicely I think for a blue. You're never going to get blue to kind of blend with your skin so love that blue we're not getting any fallout really from it and it's super super pretty tone it's really deep and dark and grungy. I think I just want to take hoax up a little bit higher than we have already, so I'm just going in with a bit more of that. All about the drama. And I've got my eyes open, it doesn't look very high at all, and I've got them closed, it looks quite high. Okay, I'm fairly happy with that. I like the shape and the way it's looking. So now I'm going to cover my lids, or the majority of the lids, with NYX Glitter Primer because we're going to go in with Source, that blue duochrome, and I'm going to blend it into code, which is the silver. So first of all, we're picking up Source on this sticky brush that we've used for the NYX Glitter Primer. I'm laying that next to the blue shade, next to that hardcore shade in the corner. And it's quite a grungy deep blue, actually. Now it's merged with those colours but I kind of like the effect it's giving. Wasn't sure it would work because I'll say it's got a bit of purple shift to it but I don't think it's looking too bad at all. It's actually quite an interesting contrast to the brown. Taking that slightly on a diagonal but not as much as we did with the wine look. Just where that meets hardcore in the corner there, just making sure that those two kind of fluff together and we don't have too much of a hard line there. And then for the inner part of my lids, we're going in with the shade Code here, this silver. I've just flipped the brush over so that we're using the other side of the same brush. And just placing that next to that source shade. And where those meet, I'm just tapping over the top just to help them flow from one to the other. It's a super metallic, pretty shimmer though, and there's not any glitter particles in it really for me to worry about. So this is a Debbie kind of shimmer. Not having too much trouble picking it up on the brush either, which is nice. The brush I'm using here is a Morphe M152. I thought something a little bit fluffier than I have been using might just help with you know to pick these shades up and it has done I think. But that looks super pretty and striking against that brown I think as well. 
you tell that's coming up high enough. On the lower lash line, I'm going to go in with the shade Grunge and meet it up with this blue that's there. I just thought we'd add a little pop of interest there. And I'm just going to use a pencil brush to apply that and just get it super close. And then for my inner corner highlight for this look, I'm going to go in with the shade Hack and just pop that just in the corner there. Okay, so that's a look to this point. Just going to hop off camera for something like waterline, mascara and a lip. And I'll be back with you with the finished look and to wrap up the video and give you my thoughts on the palette as a whole. Okay, guys, so this is the finished look for look number three. Really like this one. I think this might be my favourite of the three, actually, which surprises me because I don't normally like blue eyeshadow that much. But it's such a deep and grungy tone and then mixed with the brown I think it almost has made a neutral look in a way although it's still very striking and I always love silver on the inner part of the lids I think it really makes your eyes come to life so really like this one to finish it off I haven't gone in with a wing liner or anything like that because I've done a bit more of a winged out shape I've used Melt Supernatural Mascara on my lashes and then lips today are a Melt Matte Bullet Lipstick in the shade Old Fashioned because I thought the grungy tone of the lipstick really matched the grungy tone of that cool tone brown eyeshadow in the crease. So yeah, really like this one. But my thoughts on the palette then, well I've had a lot of use out of it because I've done four looks all together and I think I've used pretty much all the shades except for the shade Virtual which is one of those sequin shadows that mattes with sparkles. We've already got a matte black and I just know these sparkles don't stay when you, you have a shadow like that so I didn't use that one, don't feel the need to really. I think I might not have used Transmission, I can't remember, I don't think I have but I think other than that I've used them all. So the mattes first of all, I know a lot of people say that they don't like the mattes because they're quite a thin formula and it's difficult to build them like several colours on top of one another. That's not really the way I do my makeup so I tend to go with the deepest colour first or only layer one colour on top and I've not had any issues whatsoever. There's no real blending out shade apart from the white but again I didn't find that an issue because they blend themselves quite well. So yeah, I'm really impressed with the mattes and love the deep dark tones of them. That blue is beautiful, the green, the purple and that reddish tone. I think they're all superb. I like the addition of having like a bit more of a warm tone caramel brown and having a bit more of a cool tone brown. And it looks more cool tone on the eyes than it perhaps does in the pan. The greens as well, the two paler ones, they're completely different tones. So it's good to have them both in there, particularly in a palette that you might want to use at this time of the year and create Halloween looks because that shade slime is perfect or would be to go all over the lids for a matte look with that grunge shade, the purple, is it called grunge? Yeah, grunge. So yeah, really like the mattes. The shimmers, we've got a few formulas in here, I think. We've got some that are a bit more sparkly and a bit drier of a formula. And then we've got some that are that putty kind of formula that I don't like. So Encrypted is one of those putty shimmers. And I just couldn't pick it up on a brush. Really didn't like it. Uh, so yeah, not a fan of that one. Machine is beautiful. But I got so much glitter fall down into my eyes and all over my cheeks when I used it. And I only used it each side of my halo eye in my first impressions. So it's not in this video, but the first impressions, which I will link for you. So whilst it's such a beautiful colour, there's too much glitter in there for me. And the glitter in the Beauty Pay formula is almost like the size of the glitter chunks in a press glitter. And I'm a contact lens wearer with very sensitive eyes. So terrifies the light out of me when I see that size of glitter. If the glitter was just slightly smaller, more micro, I wouldn't be quite so worried. But, but yeah, that's just me. I'm paranoid about getting glitter in my eyes. I got a blister from glitter once and yeah, that worries me slightly. Uh, distortion I thought was beautiful. It's a bit more of a satiny shimmer. It has got a little bit of a sparkle in there. The silver, that's impressive. That looks really nice on my lids today. That shade code, really like that one. And I like the tones of grime. It's like a pewter kind of silver as opposed to the bright silver of code. So I think they've both got a place in the palette. The shade hack worked really well to press over my lids in look number one in the purple smoky eye to kind of bring that nightmare shimmer to life because that is just a satin there's nothing really that special about it 
um, but pressing hack over the top really worked to kind of bring out the sparkle and that's got quite micro shimmer in there so or micro sparkle should I say so didn't hate that one so yeah I've got mixed feelings about it I'm really glad I bought it is it the best quality palette in my collection no but it was £15 and 20 shades of which probably about 10 of them I think I will reach for again so I'm super happy with that you know it's a bargain for the price and colour story like 10 out of 10 for me love the colour story so much and the packaging is really nice as well so yeah that'll be my thoughts on the palette you'll have to let me know if you've got it what you think of it so far but yeah I'm really happy that I've added it to my collection and I wouldn't be afraid to add more Beauty Bay palettes to my collection having tried this one. My previous experience with Beauty Bay's formula, the only other palette I've got was the Nikki Tutorials palette which I think has the same number of shades as this but was £25 and I think that's because of the you know the collab with Nikki obviously she would need to be paid and whatever but I wasn't quite so lenient with that one because I've like I've paid £25 for that one. But I think I've kind of learned how to adapt my technique to the formula since I bought that palette and it's £10 less than that palette. So yeah, I wouldn't have any hesitation in recommending it, particularly if you're on a budget and you like the colour story. So yeah, that'll wrap up my thoughts. So thank you so much for watching the video. Let me know in the comments which was your favourite look. Would you recreate any of them? Have you got the palette? Let's chat about it. Always try and answer all of my comments if I can. So... So yeah, thank you for watching. If you're new as well, please consider subscribing before you go. But other than that, guys, hope you're having a lovely day or night wherever you are and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.